The Doctor Who, our Hambra podcast. Real Doctor Who fans with real Doctor Who opinions. Hello and welcome to the Doctor Who Lumber podcast, episode number 313 of the podcast. I am Brett, and yes, this is yet again another solo edition of the podcast. My co-hosts in crime, the dynamic trio of Liam, Legion, and Robert, have been absconded somewhere, either by a Gallifreyan time scoop or displaced in some sort of painting where Gallifrey continues to fall no more, well, until it ceases to fall no more. Either way, this is yet again another solo edition of the podcast. I hope you've enjoyed the previous two installments. This is going to be a year in review, but not for the year that you're thinking of. Yes, this is going to be a year in review for Big Finish from 2009. Yeah, I've been thinking about doing some previous year in reviews and kind of going over some of the historical releases of Big Finish. And, uh, you know, it'd be easy to start and possibly should have been starting in early, uh, you know, the, the, the very beginning. But as Legion has said numerous times, why don't we just do it like they do it in Star Wars and start in the middle? So I just just decided to choose 2009. Additionally, it kind of was helpful because of the, you know, uh, monthly magazine that uh, the Vortex magazine that came out. However, I didn't actually use that for any of it, when, which is a shame because I actually had other ideas to use the uh, Vortex. But uh, maybe that will be another project for another day. Who knows? If you'd like to reach out and uh, contact the show, please email the show at alhambraaudio at gmail.com. That is A-L-H-A-M-B-R-A audio at gmail.com. You may tweet the show at Alhambra Podcast. DMs are open. I hope you've enjoyed the previous installments of my solo shows. I really enjoyed the previous one revolving around, you know, the um, sites and voices that do reviews and the possible skepticism. I mean, I will tell you, I, the instant I hit record and uploaded it, I already had an idea of how to fix it. But you know what? I felt as though just let it go. It's fine. Just let it go. So I did. But uh, I think there's still more to discuss on that topic. And I'd love to hear Liam, Legion, and Robert's thoughts on the entirety of that too. Especially because as I am a comic novice, I have been, uh, you know, watching various YouTube channels, listening to various podcasts, and the more you listen to how people word things, the more you realize that they are tightly connected to a entity such as Marvel, such as Disney, such as the BBC, such as Doctor Who, and if they were to say anything else, that their access would be cut off. So I think that is a fascinating uh, thing to, you know, think about. Anyway, uh, that's a podcast possibly for yet again another day. If you'd like to listen to the previous one, I do encourage it, 312. Also, go back to our previous catalog. Tell us what you thought about some of our ideas, thoughts. Maybe we've changed our mind. I probably have, maybe not also. Uh, But uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Again, email the show, tweet the show, DM the show. And uh, yeah, uh, without further ado, I think I'm going to get into... Uh, the releases from Big Finish for 2009. And then I'm going to give you my top 10, uh, or my my top five favorite. And then I have a list of the top 10 most favorite by fans using the timescales, as well as the bottom 10 for the year of 2009. So going in order, since that's what you do in an order, Starting off in January 2009, we had three releases. Oh, my word. The days of just a couple, a handful of releases. Oh, and not that many box sets. That I thoroughly, thoroughly love this. So 2009 brought us Dark Shadows, The Wicked and the Dead, Main Range Release, The Key to Time, Judgment of Iskar by Simon Guerrier, and The Companion Chronicles, the Transit of Ven- Venus by Jacqueline Rainier. Now, I, uh, I, you know, I understand it was a smaller company back then, but just to, just to have those three, you know, I, I enjoy that so much. And yes, as my co-host in crime, Legion has once said, revolving around this being kind of like the Silver Age. Well, actually. Uh, let's uh, listen to what uh, Liam Legion actually had to say on the subject. Golden Age, I'd say, 
It's come and gone. Was one to circular time. I think mm. the Silver Age, which is more tarnished silver, more of a pooey brown, <laughs> is like 91 to 150. So, yes, as Legion said, this is the, you know, Silver Age or the tarnished pooey brown phase. And I think that that is kind of cemented in with the Kita Time series that starts off in January 2009. It is kind of an underwhelming, at least in my opinion, uh, trilogy that Big Finish released that would follow for a couple of months. Transit of Venus, again, that was one of my favorite things about the Companion Chronicles is I feel as though whenever there was a down month with the main range, the Companion Chronicles generally were, you know, there to kind of pick up the Doctor Who range as a whole. And I think that's another reason why I kind of miss the Companion Chronicles range and was kind of annoyed when they kind of consolidated into just one box set. But again, they did that to save money, maybe not, um, you know, make as an enjoyable product, but that is, again, in the eye of the beholder. And uh, yeah, I'm not pulling punches, not doing things to be irksome or whatever, just kind of, you know, doing this hindsight being 2020. In February 2009, we had the Iris Wild Time Series 2 release. Now, this is fantastic because this was a box set, at least according to my research, the Series 2 was a box set, and then for the next four months, they released each an indiv- each individual release from March all the way to June. So after the box set release, you could pick up The Sound of Fear, in, and then The Land of Wonder by Paul Mars, The Two Irises by Simon Guerrier, and The Panda Invasion by Mark Mars. Again, one of the things that I think would be very interesting to kind of follow along as I do this year in review for 2009 is to pay attention to the writers that I list off that are present now that are not there. And you could say, well, but, but Brett, you just said, and Legion just said, that this is the Pui Brown Silver Age. Yes, but I feel as though the same voices, the same writers that were there in the Silver Age, my opinion is around 130, 140 of the main range was the Bronze Age, which I find even better than the Silver Age. I mean, in my, personally, you know, comic book wise, I think the Bronze Age of comics are actually more enjoyable to read as I'm going back there too. So I think, and then again, it is all in the eye of the beholder. But again, that is just kind of a perspective. Again, love to get your thoughts. Email the show at alembraaudio at gmail.com. Tweet the show at Alembra Podcast. To continue on with February 2009, we have the main range release, The Key to Time, The Destroyers of Delight by Jonathan Clements, and then The Companion Chronicles, The Key to Time, The Prisoner's Dilemma by Simon Guerrier. Now, I, to me personally, I think out of all the Key to Time things, I believe The Companion Chronicles was the most enjoyable. I believe it was an ace story with um, uh, Sergeant Barbie, I think, or maybe it was just... I, you know, it's the, it's fuzzy. I don't have the, um, probably should have had the uh, clip art up with me, but uh, I do remember enjoying The Prisoner's Dilemma as the highlight of any of the Key to Time series. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, and then Iris Wild Time. I'm going to be focusing mainly, I'm going to be release, or sorry, not releasing. I'm going to be discussing the releases for each month, but I'm just mainly going to primarily focus on at the end of the day, the Doctor Who releases, since this is a Doctor Who podcast. March brings us... Oh, I do have... Uh, there. Never mind. There's the, the hot link that I created. All right. Sorry. I just didn't see it right in front of my face. The um, March 2009 brings us the key to time, The Chaos Pool by Peter Angelides, which, again, I think I just was so excited to be done with that series. Resistance by Steve Lyons, which is a second Doctor and Polly story, which I think is a really fun story. Orbis by Alan Barnes and Nick Briggs, which is an eighth Doctor adventure. Now, in all honesty, I, I, I've i never been the eighth Doctor adventure fan. I think that they had a couple of really good uh, releases, Max Warp being number one, and then va- Situation Vacant or whatever the you know, X-Factor version of uh, Doctor Who. I think that was super fun. But I think to me, the one-hour story range, at least for this, just didn't work for me. And then, you know, you go back and you listen to the Charlotte Pollard 
two hour main range releases and you're just like, oh, these could have been, I think, at least in my opinion, personally, a lot better. And I think Big Finish kind of understood that by, you know, starting off the range with the Dalek story for the series one and then ending with a Cyberman story. And then in series two, they ended with the, uh, what's his face? Um, the Timeless Child storyline that, you know, I, I, I say that jokingly, but uh, yeah. And then the next one, you had the um, eight-legged people, the, the Planet of the Spiders. And then you we ended with the um, To the Death and Charlotte Pollard, not Charlotte Pollard, Lucy Miller. There we are. Thank you, Brain, for working. So I think for me personally, the Eighth Doctor range, it was just there. I think I would have been disappointed and possibly have jumped off had I been purchasing it at this time in 2009 because it was just not good, but not bad either. I think it was just so meh that I think I would have just been annoyed. But yeah, anyway, uh, April 2009 brings us the Robin Hood, the Witchfinder, voiced by uh, sexy Raslan himself, Richard Armitage. And then we have the Robin Hood, uh, the next one, The Tiger's Tale by Jonathan Clements. Now, this is very interesting. The first one was written by Rebecca Levine. And then this one, Jonathan Clements. I don't know Rebecca Levine, but Jonathan Clements has done some Doctor Who stuff. Main range release, 120, The Magic Mousetrap, which I find is probably one of my more favorite ones of the Silver Age. Uh, this is written by Matthew Sweet. Companion Chronicles, The Magician's Oath, written by Scott Hancock, which is the um, Mike Yates storyline, which I think was just a little bit subpar. You have The Eighth Doctor Adventures, Hot House by Jonathan Morris. And again, by this time, we have five releases for one month. And again, you know, if we go through the time, and I, because I did go through that in a previous episode, you have, you know, two Robin Hood adventures. You have a two, a four-parter or two-hour Magic Mousetrap. You, you have the one-hour Magician's Oath, and you have the one-hour Hot House. That is six hours of content for one month. I think you know burnout. I think frustration. I think a whole bunch of other things would be happening less to Big Finish and Doctor Who fans if Big Finish would scale back. But again, it is you know they are pursuing the box set stuff so that you know it can be cheaper on them to publish maybe cheaper for us to buy but uh, I think they are I think it's kind of doing them more of a favor than it is doing fans a favor but that is just another opinion May 2009 brings us Stargate SG-1 the first prime written by James Swallow again a previous Doctor Who uh, writer Robin Hood Friendly Fire Trevor Trevor Baxendale Robin Hood, The Dam Buster, Michael Aberton, which I've never heard that name before. The main range release, Enemy of the Daleks by David Bishop. The Mahogany Murders, Liam's probably number one if he was to do a list. And it'd be kind of fun to figure out if I could make a Liam's list. Anyway, by Andy Lane. And then The Eighth Doctor Adventures, The Beast of Orlock by Barnaby Edwards. And again, I think... The enemy of the Daleks, I feel as though, is the thing that sticks out the most for me because, it, you know, if, at least for me personally, uh, whenever I would, I, I, I was very like picky about how my uh, everything looked like in my uh, iTunes. And if there was ever a, co- um, a cover art that did not download, this was the default uh, cover art. And I, I think, in all honesty, I, I believe that this is a pretty enjoyable uh, story. This, I get this one confused with another one with the, um, oh, what was it? Ah, oh, my brain's failing me. Anyway, I think I get that one confused with the one with uh, Charlotte Pollard and the, um, uh, the other Daleks. Anyway. A brain failing currently right now. June 2009 brings us The Deer Hunters by Jonathan Clements, Stargate Atlantis Impressions by Scott Anders, Bernie Summerfield Glor- uh, Season 10.1 Glory Days by Nick Wallace. And I will tell you, I 
What I probably should do is probably start listening back to some of the early uh, Bernice Summerfield releases because I do own, you know, at least the first couple of seasons. And I think, you know, that is that is what helped Big Finish get to where they were was, you know, not having the Doctor Who license, but, uh, you know, taking this, you know, character from the books and uh, altering some of the Virgin novelizations, creating the Bernie Summerfield storyline, and getting Doctor Who fans in that way. Uh, you know, I think uh, it's so creative to think about when you think what uh, Big Finish had to do to get their foot in the door. And I think we take it for granted. And I think maybe possibly Big Finish takes all the hard work that they have done early on for granted. But again, that is just an opinion. Uh, continuing on in June 2009, we have The Siege, which is a Robin Hood story by written by Simon Guerrier. The main range release, 122, The Angel of Scutari by Paul Sutton. The Companion Chronicles, uh, 312, which is The Steelers of Saf, the Sa- whatever, by Nigel Robinson. That is a weird one, I believe, featuring, I think that's Romana 1, if memory serves me right. And then I think probably one of the better Eighth Doctor adventures that was not Max Warp and Situation Vacant were in Dawn, written by Nick Briggs. July 2009 brings us the main range release 123, The Company of Friends. This is a, you know, one of those four part single issue stories featuring Benny's story, written by Lance Parkin, Fritz's story, Fitz's story by Stephen Cole. Izzy's story by Alan Barnes, and Mary's story written by Jonathan Morris. Mary's story being Mary Shelley, which I believe is the most interesting and the best story of all four of those. I think the rest of them, personally for me, are forgettable. Stargate SG-1, The Pathogen by Sharon Gosling. Bernie Summerfield, 10-2. Absence by Daniel O'Mahony. We have Dark Shadows, Echoes of Insanity by D. Lynn Smith. And then we have Companion Chronicles, The Drowned World by Simon Guerrier, which is the second part in the three-part series featuring Sarah Kingdom. And then we have The Eighth Doctor Adventures, The Scapegoat by Pat Mills. August 2009 brings us the Stargate Atlantis, The Kindness of Strangers, the Bernie Summerfield 10.2, The Venus Man Trap by Mark Clapton and Lance Perkin. Again, so many names that are so familiar, at least within the 2009 era, and unfamiliar for at least half of them in, you know, 2022, 23. Again, just kind of, you know, throwing that out there, kind of doing some just think alouds. Patient Zero, the main range release, 123 by Nick Briggs, which you know, continued on with this Charlotte Pollard um, Viren story, which I'm so done with the Virens. I, what could have been interesting was quickly beaten to death. And now for some reason, Charlotte Pollard is stuck constantly fighting and being with the Virens because now they're tied to her post-Doctor Who storyline, which I think is kind of annoying. The Companion Chronicles, The Glorious Revolution by Jonathan Morris, which, if memory serves me right, this is a series season 7B story. And then The Eighth Doctor Adventures, The Cannibalists by Jonathan Morris. Again, so many Jonathan Morris stories, Lance Parkin, we got Stephen Cole that has been through throughout 2009 so far, Simon Guerrier, you know, we even have in the future, we'll have a Mark Platt story. Like some of these, you know, Golden Age and Silver Age and some Bronze Age writers are all here. And the question is, is what are they doing now? And why aren't they doing it for Big Finish? Anyway, that's just another think aloud. August 2009 brings us Stargate Atlantis, The Kindness of Strangers. Oh, nope, I've already read that one. September 2009, uh, the main range release 125, Paper Cuts by Mark Platt. Stargate SG-1, Lines of Communication by Luke Manziel. Bernice Summerfield, 10-4, Secret Origins, which I do believe is a uh, virgin novelization or maybe one of those novelizations that were around Big Finish. Either way, I do believe that this is a 
Seventh Doctor and Bernie Summerfield's story, if memory serves me right, written by Eddie Robson. We have Dark Shadows, The Curse of Pharaoh by Stephen Mark Riney. We have The Forgotten Blue, which I've, or sorry, Forgotten Blue Forgotten Planet by Nick Briggs, which I think, um, I wish I could forget that that story, that I own that story because I had to realize that I paid full price for that. The Companion Chronicles uh, 4.3, The Prisoner of Peladon by Mark Wright and Kevin Scott, which I will tell you, I've owned that for a while. Never listened to it. One of these days I'm going to have to get around to listening to The Prisoner of Peladon. But uh, after listening to the Peladon box set, I'm uh, kind of uh, fine with it, actually. The Eighth Doctor Adventures, The Eight Truths. Again, this is by Eddie Robson. This is the, you know, the two-part series finale of the Eighth Doctor featuring the planet, the spiders from Planet of the Spiders, not the planet from the, the spiders. Anyway, uh, October 2009 brings us Star- Stargate Atlantis Meltdown by David A. McEntee. Judge Dredd, The Crime Chronicles, Stranger Than Truth by David Bishop. Main Range release, 127, The Castle of Fear by Alan Barnes, which I've tried to listen to so many times. I feel as though it is a good story, but I just can't make it. I believe that is a a Rutan story that takes place in historical uh, England. Then you have The The Perils Effect by George Mann, which is a companion chronicle. And then The Eighth Doctor Adventure, The World Wide Web by Eddie Robson. Again, kind of ending on a high note. The uh, November 2009 brings us Sherlock Holmes' The Last Act by David Stuart Davies, which I remember buying full price for, was excited for this. And then I can't remember if it's the second one or the, the, the first one, but you find out that you're at a wake for Dr. Watson. And it just, you know, it just a complete letdown but um, yeah anyway and actually that was before Nick Briggs decided to voice uh, Sherlock Holmes Iris Wild Time and the Claws of Santa by Kevin Scott and Mark Wright Judge Dredd Crime Chronicles Blood Will Tell by James Swallows the main range release The Eternal Summer by Jonathan Morris have not listened to that one also probably owned it for a while too You know, when I have nothing else better to do, I probably should just listen to those. The Lost Stories, The Nightmare Fair by Graham Williams, you know, 1-1, and The Companion Chronicles, The Ringpool World by Paul Mars, which is a um, Turlough story. I've tried to listen to it. I've just never gotten through it. And then we end 2009 with uh, the Cybermen 2 box set. This is like our second box set of... 2002, the first one being in February, the Iris Time Series 2 box set, then Sherlock Holmes, The Death and Life, I th- think that's the uh, sh- um, whatever one, uh, The Judge Dread Crime Chronicles, The Devil's Playground by Jonathan Clement, The Plague of the Daleks, which is a main range release 129 by Matt Morris, The Lost Stories, The Mission to Magnus 1-2 by Philip Martin, people have thoughts on that one. Then we have the subscriber special, The Return to, uh, of the Crotons by Nick Briggs. Oh, man. When I typed that up, I was so happy to see hmm, subscriber special. I miss getting special stuff for just subscribing to Big Finish. You know, it was just one of those things where, you know, yeah, you're probably being, you know, charged a little bit more possibly along the way. But uh, actually, I don't mean, no, actually, you were, probably weren't. You were just rewarded for, you know, your subscription. And, you know, now we just get short trips written by, um, you know, you know, I don't know, schlub dub 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 Anyway, uh, The Eighth Doctor Adventures, uh, Death in Blackpool. This is the fourth season, 4-1, written by Alan Barnes. And that ends the year 2009 for Big Finish. So again, I I really liked going through that and just kind of looking at all of the writers that were writing for Big Finish in 2009 and kind of currently not writing for Big Finish for (laughs) 2020 for the most part, 2021, 2022, 2023, and probably 2024. So I just think that's kind of interesting to kind of go back and 
revisit and think about some of those. Now for the, um, oh man, I wish I could just bounce this off of somebody. Mm, not here. All right. I'm just going to go down the main range release for Doctor Who at, from all of the uh, 2009. So again, the key to time, ah, I'm not going to do that. Never mind. I'm just going to skip that. All right. So I'm going to give you the top 10 rated by the time scales. I did do have my top five and I did my top five before I even did uh, mine so it wouldn't you know influence or affect my uh, rating and I do have the uh, time scales the average review rating for each one of these two so I'm going to do the top 10 time scales for uh, from Big Finish the Doctor Who ones though because I did not bother doing you know Dark Shadows or Judge Dredd or whatever so top 10 uh, highest rated from 2009 in the world of Doctor Who Number 10, uh, Companion Chronicles, The Drowned World by Simon Guerriere with a score of 8.1 out of 10. Number 9, The Forgotten Blue Planet by Nick Briggs, which is also an 8.1. So it's just ahead because of um, alphabetical order. Number 8, Main Range Release, 124, Patient Zero by Nick Briggs with a rating of 8.2. Number seven, The Companion Chronicles, A Glorious Revolution by Jonathan Morris, an 8.2. Again, ahead because of alphabetical order. Number six, The Transit of Venus by J Jacqueline Rainier. Number five, The Main Range Release, The Eternal Summer by Jonathan Morris, 8.4 out of 10. Number four, The Eighth Doctor Adventures, A Death in Blackpool, 8.4. Again, Alphabetical order. Number three, main range release, 120, The Magic Mousetrap by Matthew Sweet. Number two, The Mahogany Murders, The Companion Chronicles by Andy Lane, 8.8 .8 out of 10. And number one, in from the world of Doctor Who, Bernie Summerfield, Glory Days by Nick Wallace, 8.9 out of 10. So, that is the highest, you know, that is the top 10 really favorite releases, rated, uh, re scored, rated, reviewed by fans on the timescales. Now I will get to the lowest uh, rated uh, 10 from 2009 by fans on the timescales. Starting off with number 10. Main range release, 125, Paper Cuts by Mark Platt, 6.9 out of 10. Oh, I made a mistake. Oh, nope, I did not. Never mind. Brain malfunction. Okay, number nine, main range release, 129, the Plague of the Daleks. I don't remember reading that one. Did I miss that month? Did I miss that? Where? Did I? I'm. Did I miss reading? I did. No, no, I didn't. Never mind. I just forgot that I read it. All right. Okay. Back to normal. Number eight, The Lost Stories, 1-1, One -One, Nightmare Fair by Graham Williams, 6.7 out of 10. Number seven, Eighth Doctor Adventures, Hot House by Jonathan Morris, 6.6 .6 out of 10. Number six, from the lowest rated 10 for 2009, The Companion Chronicles, the Perilous Effect by George Mann. Number five, the subscriber special. Number seven, Return of the Crotons by Nick Briggs, 6.4 out of 10. Number four, uh, main range release 117, The Key to Time, The Judgment of Iskar by Simon Guerriere, a score of 6.6 .6 out of 10. Number three, The Companion Chronicles, The Stealers of Saf by Nigel Roberts, 6.2 out of 10. Number two, main range release, 119, The Key to Time, The Chaos Pool, by Peter Angelides, 6.1 out of 10. And, according to fans in t on the timescales, the worst release in the worlds of Big Finish, or sorry, the worlds of Doctor Who, for 2009, Lost Stories, 1-2, 
The Mission to Magnus by Philip Martin. Wow. All right. So here is my top five favorite releases from Big Finish for the year 2009. And I will tell you, I am going to start off with an honorable mention. So number six, kind of, because I wanted to only do five. And I'm glad that I like, left myself at five because whew, it was hard coming up with five. So, But the honorable mention is going to be Cyberman 2. Uh, I thoroughly loved the uh, Cyberman 2 box set. I thought that was fantastic. James Swallows hit it out of the park. I find it better than Cyberman 1, which is a good story, but I feel as though this affects the, um, you know, just the disturbing nature of everything, the war between the humans, the the cyber, I almost said Cylons, the Cybermen and the androids, just fantastic. It just, I, I, I go, went back and forth between this one, you know, knocking out my number five, but you know what? I had to give it uh, an honorable mention. So I, and you know what? I do think that that is probably one of the strongest box sets Big Finish has done in many years. Not the best, but one of the strongest ones in many years. All right. Anyway, number five on my top five for 2009. I almost said 2005. Ooh, that'd be interesting. Um, Number five, The Eighth Doctor Adventures, Death in Blackpool by Alan Barnes. Now, I um, have criticized The Eighth Doctor Adventures. I did it at the beginning of the podcast. I still stand by every single thing that I say regarding The uh, Eighth Doctor Adventures. I think it is kind of too long. Or no, sorry, not too long, too short. And it leaves you wanting more. It could, you know, it could be developed further. But I feel as though this story set up everything which eventually gave us the situation vacant, which I enjoy. And so because Death in Blackpool gave us situation vacant, I have to put this on my top five. Number two, Companion Chronicles, The Transit of Venus by Jacqueline Rainier. I find so many of the Ian stories. I actually, I find the Stephen stories from the first Doctor more enjoyable, but there were no Stephen stories. But I find this story fantastic. I find it so re-listenable. I will drift off to sleep listening to The Transit of Venus because it is very deep. It is very imaginative. It is very first Doctory. And it, you know, I can't listen to Dalek stories or massive alien stories uh, with you know weird distortion voices as I drift off to sleep because you know that will just kind of take me out of the whole sleeping process and get me kind of like you know more focused into the uh, <laughs> listening to the uh, audio or just you know, wake me up altogether. So transit of Venus number four. Number three, I made mention of this one possibly being like one of this is the best we're in story. The Eighth Doctor Adventures, We're in Dawn by Nick Briggs. This is a fantastic story. I think I've never really liked the We're in. I do not like an arc in space. I think I now have a tad bit more um, enjoyment for We're in Isle, the Sixth Doctor Adventures, uh, I, than when I listened to it the first time. But uh, I think that this is possibly the best We're in story. I think it actually makes the we're in sad, oddly, somewhat sympathetic. So I think that is kind of a good thing. We have number two, Magic Mouse Trap. Again, this is the main range release, 125 by Matthew Sweet. I find Magic Mouse Trap just fantastic. I love it. I've re-listened to it multiple times. I think that, you know, there's so many for me, like the Seventh Doctor can be and I think is somewhat overrated and I do know that I I know Liam really likes the darkness of the seventh doctor I enjoy the darkness too but I find that uh, he uh, I'm not sure if it's the acting I'm not sure if it's the character but it just gets a little bit too shouty Uh, especially like you know night thoughts I I don't understand the joy that uh, Liam and a couple people have Many people have for Night Thoughts. 
But, uh, you know, I think Magic Mousetrap is a very strong story. And number one on my top five for 2009 from Big Finish in the worlds of Doctor Who, The Companion Chronicles, The Drowned World by Simon Guerriere. Again, this is the second part of the trilogy of the Sarah Kingdom. I love this story. I think that this one actually is, ooh, which one is better, The Drowned World or The Home Truths? Like The Guardian of the Galaxy, I think, is possibly the weakest one out of the entirety of the Sarah Kingdom trilogy. But uh, The Drowned World, super fantastic. I think this is great. Simon Guerrier, again, Listen to the names of all the people, even, you know, ah, I I love this. This is why I loved doing this whole, um, you know, best of for 2009 is I've not, you know, seen Jonathan Morris's name come up as often as it has done in, you know, 2009. Maybe it's done it in, you know, 2010, whatnot, but it's come up so many times. We have Andy Lane. We have Simon Guerrier. I mean, you know, it's so great to see some of these big Finnish Doctor Who creators' names constantly come into the forefront. And, you know, it just brings me joy and happiness to, you know, kind of think fondly about this era, even though uh, Legion's uh, discussion of... uh, Which is more tarnished silver, more of a pooey brown. So, yeah, I mean, you know, and again, just to say everybody's opinion is valid and is exceptional onto themselves. But uh, what are your thoughts about my list? Do you agree, disagree with the uh, time scales top 10, top, you know, lowest 10 rated uh, doc- World of Doctor Who releases? Again, email the show at alembraaudio at gmail.com. Tweet the show at Alembra Podcast. DMs are open. And until next time, I will see you in time. You have been listening to the Doctor Who Alhambra podcast. Doctor Who is owned and trademarked by the BBC. Doctor Who Alhambra is not affiliated with the BBC or Big Finish. No infringement is intended. Visit our website at alhambrapodcast.weebly.com or email the show at alhambraaudio at gmail.com Tweet us at alhambrapodcast That is A-L-H-A-M-B-R-A podcast. Thank you.